Hi everyone and welcome to our video tutorial for this tassel bandana scarf that you can see Malibu modeling here. So we hope you enjoy it. Please like, share and subscribe and we hope to see you soon. Thanks. Bye. Okay, so to make this bandana scarf with tassels you'll need some yarn and I'm filming this in summer and I'm choosing one of my go-to yarns this summer, this mercerized cotton in a two weight. I love the way it works up. Um, you know, you can make this a winter project, a summer project, whatever you prefer. It's probably going to suit yarns down in the um, light to medium weight. Um, could be a, a wool blend, an acrylic, a cotton blend, whatever you choose. And uh, yeah, probably down on the finer weight would be um, most successful for this pattern, depending on the look you like, whether you want a more bulky, bulky look or a you know more fine look. Entirely up to you. I've got a 3mm crochet hook to correspond to my yarn. So choose one that suits your yarn. A pair of scissors. A darning needle to weave in my ends. I've got this piece of cardboard that I've cut off uh, just a, a box and I'm going to use this off cut to make my tassel. Now there's lots of things that you can use to make a tassel. A piece of cardboard is fine, um, a credit card even, you could use a small book. Um, like I said I'm going to use this this cardboard and you know it's a really simple way of making tassels you just need something that you can wind your yarn around that's going to be longer than the length of the tassels that you want so I'm going to end up with about five centimeter long tassels and so this this cardboard is probably about you know eight to ten centimeters so that gives me plenty of leeway to give my tassels a little haircut at the end and an optional tape measure to take a measurement of your cat's neck circumference. I'll include in the description box below a guide to standard cat neck circumferences and you can just work off that. This pattern doesn't need an exact measurement. You just need to be able to tie this around your cat's neck. So if you've got your cat with you, you can just try it as you go or you can work with a ballpark figure. Okay, so here's two of these bandana scarves that I've made previously. One is in the same yarn that I'm using today, this white one. And um, yeah, it's the same yarn, just a different color. This one here is a non-mercerized cotton and it's about a three weight around there. And I also love the way this works up and I love the tassels that you get at the end. They've got a little bit more body to them, a bit more volume. So I love how they, those have turned out. Um, to make this you'll need to know just a few basic techniques and that includes how to slip knot onto your hook, how to create a chain, how to double crochet and double crochet decrease. So that's really all the stitches you need. Um, if you need to brush up on anything before you get started then please do and I'm going to show you how I make tassels and you if you've got your own way to make a tassel or you can leave them off if you don't want to add a tassel you you know feel free to go ahead otherwise I'll show you how I make them and then you know you can choose whether you add them or not so let's get started okay so just show to show you quickly before we get started how this is going to work is we're going to start down at one end increase our way to the center point and then decrease down the other side so we're going to work uh, our increases just along this one edge so we're going to increase every second row and that will be our odd numbered rows and then on this edge the neckline edge we won't be increasing okay so that's just to give you an idea of how this will go but to get started take your yarn and make a slip knot onto your hook and then we're going to get started with a chain of five one two three four and five now in this furthest chain from the hook we're going to double crochet so yarn over insert your hook pull up a loop oops pull up a loop yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two now we're not increasing on our first row, even though it's odd numbered. We're going to move on to row two. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
three and four. Now we're going to chain four and that's the cha we'll be chaining four at the beginning of each and every row from here on out and we'll be increasing on the on the odd rows from here on out. So we've got our chain of four, we'll turn into the third chain. So you can either just count, miss this first chain here and go into the third, or you can count your third chain from the bottom here, one, two, and three. Same result either way. And we'll be making a double crochet into that third chain. And it's a second row, so we're not increasing. Chain four and turn. Now this is our third row and we will be increasing here. So yarn over. Once again find that third chain so you can count from the bottom or you can just skip that first chain and go into the next one. Place a double crochet so just as before just as the previous row but this is an odd numbered row so we're going to increase. We'll chain one and then we'll double crochet back into that same chain to make our increase. Okay, so that's row three. Chain four and turn. So row four, we won't be increasing. Yarn over, insert your hook into that first stitch right underneath the chain and double crochet. Chain one. Now, when we've got this, so we're always skipping that second to last stitch that's next to the chain, okay? And we go straight to work in the chain. So we've chained our one, and then we're going to once again work into that third chain with a double crochet. And it's row four, so we're not increasing, okay? You can start to see now we're increasing on this edge here, okay? Chain four and turn into row five. So we will be increasing in this row. Yarn over, insert your hook and work into that first stitch directly underneath the chain. Chain one. And then working into the third chain again, so always skipping this, this second to last stitch here, or this last stitch really, and working into that third chain. chain one and we'll place another stitch into that same chain to work our increase. Okay so maybe you're starting to see how this will go. Chain four into row six which is an even row so not an increased row. Work into that first stitch with your double crochet. Chain one work into your next stitch so your next double crochet chain one and skipping that that last stitch there work in directly into the chain with your double crochet okay chain four into row seven which will be an increase row and you'll start to you won't have to keep track of your numbers of rows from you know starting sort of from here on out because you'll it'll be very clear which edge you're increasing on okay it'll start to become clearer and clearer so work into that first stitch with your double crochet chain one into your next stitch double crochet chain one and into the third chain. So once again, skipping that, that last stitch there and working into your last, sorry, into your chain, your third chain, double crochet, chain one, and then we're in, on an odd row. We're on that edge that we're increasing, so we'll place a second double crochet after a chain one into that third chain. Chain four. And turn. So we'll just do a couple more rows together. Work into that first stitch. Double crochet, chain one. And into the next stitch. Chain one. Into the next stitch. chain one 
and then into the third chain work a double crochet oops okay okay so you can see that it's starting to create a triangle and now you no longer have to keep track of the rows just it will be increasing on this this edge here that you can see is starting to to angle downwards okay so row nine two three and four but again we don't need to keep track of them anymore double crochet into that first stitch chain one double crochet in the next chain one and the next chain one and into that third chain on the end there two double crochets separated by a chain one okay so hopefully you've seen the pattern now so let's do two more rows together if you're ready to move on then 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 keep going on your own from here otherwise let's do one more row so this is a non-increase row we're working towards this the straight edge so it's row 10 as we know but we're working towards the straight edge now so we know it's not an increase row chain one work into the next stitch chain one the next stitch chain one the next stitch chain one and skipping that that final stitch there work straight into your third chain with your double crochet and let's do one more increase row together so chain four and turn work into that first stitch chain one the next stitch chain one the third chain one the fourth chain one skip that last stitch work into the third chain double crochet and this is our increase edge chain one and then one more double crochet so what you'll do from here is you'll continue that two row repeat so increasing on this 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 edge here not increasing on this edge here and you'll keep working until you've reached your halfway point okay so that will be um, determined by the length of the scarf that you want according to how large is your cat's neck how you know how much overhang you want with your tie um, so just to give you an idea Melba's neck circumference is 24 centimeters and I won't include the ties here uh, sorry the tassels here in my measurement but to reach halfway I've gone for about 29 centimeters okay so a good rule of thumb is you want at least at least your cat's neck circumference doubled for the entire length of your bandana scarf at least so you can see there I've actually added quite a bit extra so I've got 29 centimeters so I'm going to end up with 58 centimeters okay and Melba's neck circumference is only 24 centimeters so if I doubled that that would be 48 but I'm actually going about 10 centimeters more than that and that gives me plenty of room to make a little tie so I'll tie this around her neck and for there to be some some hang okay and for the bandana to sit a little bit loosely around her neck now if you want it to sit more tightly around your cat's neck you obviously just you know you 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 won't make it as long okay if you don't want as much 
overhang and or you know hanging down and and also take into consideration the length that your ties will uh, your tassels will be as well so it's really only something that you can determine for yourself but go work to what you think will be your halfway point or what you would like to be your halfway point and you can you know you can try it on your cat and check where the halfway point um you know sits and if it, if you think it gives you enough to make a little tie a little knot Okay, so continue working. I'm going to do the same and I'll meet you when I get to my halfway point. Okay, so I'm at my halfway point and I've just started my um, next row, which would be an increase, but we're going to turn this increase now into a decrease. So it's pretty obvious we're going to be decreasing at the same edge that we were increasing. So I'll finish off this little bit here off camera and we'll get to this bottom edge here, this increase edge, and then we'll start to decrease. So I'll see you once I get down here. Okay, so we're down here for our first decrease. Now I'll just finish off that last double crochet there now we've got that last stitch and our chain left so how we're going to work this is so still chain one we're going to double crochet decrease in these last two so working in that double crochet that last stitch half of your double crochet and then yarn over insert your hook pull up a loop Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through the last three. So doing a double crochet decrease, let's just go back and do that again actually. So we've got our last, so we've chained one, we've got our last stitch there, plus the chain three, or plus the, the chain four really it is. And then, so we'll insert our hook, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, stop, yarn over, insert your hook in that third chain, Yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through the last three. And then to start off the next row, four, we turn. And then we skip that double crochet decrease and work into the next stitch. And then we continue with that row as before. Okay. And that will give us our decrease here on this side. So continue, continue down. So you'll work this same, exactly the same way. This, this um, even, yeah, this even, even row because it's a non-decrease row working towards the neckline. You'll come back and then you'll repeat that process here. So when, once I get back here, we'll do it one more time together and then uh yeah and then i'll just let you go on until i meet you down and we'll finish off the end here together okay so i'm back down at my decrease edge so chain one and you see you've got one stitch and your chain from the previous row left so you'll do your double crochet decrease in those two in those in the stitch and the chain together and then chain your four two three and four and turn skip that double crochet decrease and then work into the next stitch so you go ahead you finish off your decreases and when we get down towards this the equivalent of this other end we'll uh, meet each other and we'll finish off together but in the meantime continue on with your decreases and I'll see you soon okay so I'm right down here at the end and I'm placing my so I'm on an, a decrease row here so I just put my stitch in that first stitch and then I've got my last stitch and my chain to decrease so just as before my decrease chain my four and turn so skip that decrease and work into straight into the chain because remember you're skipping the decrease you skip that that uh, that stitch in this row so you skip that stitch that's just before the chain so work straight into the chain there chain four 
and turn and then we work straight into that chain once again and that's your end so just double check that you've got the halfway point which I do so just make sure that your halfway point is where you're you know so you've got the same length of both ends and then you'll just yarn over and pull through and you can snip off your excess so leave a bit of a tail here because we're going to be sewing our so you know you don't need a long tail but just leave you know a a bit of a tail just don't make it super short because we're going to be sewing on our tassels so you can just pull that tight so you don't need to weave in your ends on this on this project so we're going to move on and make our tassels now okay so take your card or whatever you're using to make your tassel and you'll place your yarn on the card or whatever book or credit card or whatever you're using here and you're just going to wrap around so I'm going to wrap 12 times so that's once twice three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven and twelve now you can choose as many or as few times as you want to wrap but you just need to keep it in mind um, so you make the same size tassel next time okay for the second tassel so just snip off snip off down the end here once you've wrapped the number of times that you want to wrap and that will depend on your yarn and the size of the tassels you want etc and place so take your yarn just leave everything on the card take your yarn and just make sure that doesn't that last wrap doesn't come undone and snip off a length of the yarn and you're going to tie tie a double knot in the top there to hold all those strands together and then you can wiggle why card is good actually is because it's kind of it um, you know it makes it easier it folds over a little bit so you can easily get this your strands off so there's the beginning of your tassel so just keep everything in their loops with my tail ends that's one of them and there's the other one so this this is going to get a haircut anyway so just keep but keep your tail ends out can put that card away now so you've got you've got something that looks like this and then you'll take another strand of yarn and place it underneath so you want to create the little head part of the tassel and just you know pull it pull a reasonable length because eventually this is going to get incorporated into your tassel as well and just cut cut that length so you want it long enough so it'll be part of your tassel and then just pull down your strands so they're nice and sitting nice and flat and then you can tie your so you can make a a bigger head on your tassel or a smaller head on your tassel but you just want to make it so it's approximately the same on each one so just make sure everything's sort of sitting flat and then just tie your little head okay and you can you can shape it out but you want to tie a nice tight double knot in there now what you'll find with this with this these tails here one will probably sit flat but the other one you might have to either take your crochet hook or a needle and just actually needle is going to be better let's do it with a needle take take your darning needle and just thread that end through so this is the end that I've tied the little head with and you'll find that this one one of them will stick out one will sit flat into your tassel but one will probably stick out 
and you just want to feed that down into the the main part of the tassel like so okay so then they both become part of your part of your tassel and then you just you know you just shape it as you want to and then you give it a little haircut so you're going to need some sharp scissors so I've just got my sewing scissors here some nice sharp scissors and you want to firstly cut those cut those loops have I missed one there nope and then you want to cut to the length that you want for your tassel so I want mine I'm going to measure mine and I want them to be about five centimeters and it doesn't matter what length you want them to be, just as long, actually let's make it, yeah, I'm going to make it five centimetres from the, the measurement where I've tied the head. So let's go with there. Doesn't matter what length you make them, just as long as obviously you make both the same length. And just give your tassel a little haircut. And you can just shape the head a little bit if you need to. But there's there's your first tassel. And actually, I think I just need to just tidy up those ends again. So if you need to give it a little, you know, a little further haircut, and do whatever you need to do. And that's one tassel done. And you'll do you'll make two obviously. One more little snip there. And obviously you'll make two, so I'm going to go ahead and make one more tassel and I'll come back and we'll sew them on together. Okay, so you've got your two tassels and your finished bandana scarf. Now, I like to use these tassels, that, these, sorry, these ends that are on the bandana scarf to bring down into my tassel, okay? And so what I do is I just... Now, there's no right or wrong way to do this, of course. You just sew on your tassels if you've got a better way than what I'm doing. I'm just going to feed this tail end down and through. So it's also going to become part of my, part of my tail, part of my tassel. So just bring that up like this. So that's how I attach it in a really central way, okay? And then... The, these ones here, I also attach. So let's just thread this one and I'll show you what I do with these. So what I do is I try to avoid having any ends to weave in. So I'll bring the, the, one of these tails, and I do it for both of them, but I'll do one of them on, on camera. So I bring them up into the, up into the work, just a little bit, doesn't have to be too far. Bring it across to the other side, down the other side, and then once again back through the tassel, and then down into the tassel like so. Okay, so just be careful you don't pull that too tight and misshape. And then I do the same with the second with the second tail end. So go ahead, you now you just sew on however works for you, that's what works for me. And then these three ends get a little, once again get a little haircut and are part of my, part of my tassels. Okay, so you sew on your tassels and we'll be back to finish off together. Okay, so there's my finished tassels added onto the end there and my bandana scarf so i love this one i think this is like it's so easy to wear i think it's really fashionable i think it's really stylish i think it's very cute and cool so uh, i hope you've enjoyed this tutorial it's uh these bandana scarves are one of my favorite to design and make up so i hope you've enjoyed it too and if you get a chance send along your photos to catventurous.community at gmail.com or you can tag us on social media at catventurous.crochet. So I would just like to say at the end there, I'm dedicating this pattern to Melanie Ham, who is and was a um, YouTuber. Uh, she was a sewer, a quilter, a crocheter, and 
her husband just released, recently released a video as the story of her of her journey through cancer. She died in January 2022 at the age of, I think she was 36, maybe 37, but in her mid-30s. And I just want to um, express my gratitude to Melanie. She, uh, you know, I've, she actually, the first crochet pattern that I ever made um, was you know it was one of my very first crochet projects and it was all wonky but it was a it was a hat with a little pom-pom on top for for me not for a cat but um you know she really inspired me to crochet and she was such a sweet and loving human being so I want to dedicate this tutorial to Melanie so thanks very much Melanie and um, if you get a chance watch her husband's uh, documentary film about her her, her life and her story. So once again, thanks very much for being here. And as Melanie would have said, see you in the next video. Bye.